The timeline of Modern Warfare, including its characters, factions, locations and events, spans across the campaign, spec ops, multiplayer and warzone. The story of Modern Warfare and its timeline aren't just told in cutscenes and gameplay, but also in secret intel, operator backstories, multiplayer maps and even teaser trailers. This timeline covers the entirety of the story of Modern Warfare and will be divided into two parts. Part 1 dives into the annexation of Urzikstan, foundation of Alcatala, the war on terror and the end of Barkov's rule. Part 2 takes a closer look at the invasion of Ferdansk, the creation and fall of Armistice and in turn the rise of Shadow Company. In response to a terrorist attack on Russian soil, the year before the turn of the millennium, as a lieutenant Roman Barkov led coordinated assaults on villages in the resource-rich region of northeastern Urzikstan in what was carefully called the Annexation of Urzikstan. Urzikstan is an arid peninsula on the eastern border of the Black Sea, located in the Caucasus region, bordering the Russian Federation to the north and Georgia to the east. Seeing as Urzikstan was a so-called breeding ground for terrorists and willing to do anything to protect his homeland, Barkov deployed chlorine gas tip bombs and unknown nerve agents. The rogue attacks sent civilians streaming into local hospitals, which were then struck by Russian warplanes. The annexation took place across the country's many cities like Sakra, Aktabi, Tobrak, Ramaza and the hometown of two kids that will become very important for future events, Rizabi. As Rizabi was hit by Russian artillery, an 8-year-old Farah Karim and her mother were buried under the rubble that was once her school. Although her mother lay dead, Farah was freed from the debris by a group of rescue workers. She is then taken home by her father, Walid. As Russian troops infiltrated the city, they started shooting civilians and deploying chlorine gas. Her father took her to their home as the gas was released. Her brother Hadir was waiting for them. As they were ready to leave, a Russian soldier entered their home, killing their father. The two siblings killed the soldier before fleeing the house. After sneaking through the village, Vera and Hadir found a truck and were about to flee their village before being captured by Barkov himself, who sent them into a prison camp in Tobrak. Within hours, Barkov's forces took control of the entire country, which earned him the rank of general. Knowing the West must turn a blind eye to his army's atrocities, as direct conflict between the superpowers risked an all-out world war, General Barkov's unchecked tactics held Urzikstan under martial law. Now controlling the country, Barkov proclaimed himself Novi Korol, or New King seeing any and all rebellion or defiance as an insurgency and their perpetrators as terrorists, Barkov ordered scientists to combine existing weaponized chemicals to achieve three objectives. Zero detectability, foiling of protective gear and ten times the lethality in order to achieve his ultimate goal to root out terrorism at the source. In 2009, inside the Tobrek prison camp, Farah Karim started a resistance movement and sent messages to the West as Commander Karim. Barkov, able to intercept some of these messages, wanted to know who this Karim was and tortured Farah until the prison was attacked, forcing Barkov to leave the area. During Barkov's retreat, Farah led an insurgency inside the prison with other inmates. They were soon intercepted by Lieutenant John Price and other SAS operatives who were looking for Commander Karim. With the help of the SAS, Farah saved Hadir as the warehouse he was in was on fire and they then managed to take control of the prison camp. That day, as Farah earned her freedom, not only did she make a powerful ally in Lieutenant Price, but she started a massive insurgency against Barkov's regime, the Urzikstan Liberation Force or ULF one that would be a thorn in Barkov's side for the next 10 years. Four years passed since the creation of the ULF and Omar Suleiman, a freedom fighter and a hero in the eyes of the West, split from the resistance movement, pursuing independence via the use of terrorism. He believed the current ULF tactics were ineffective and would set up cells across Africa, Europe and Middle East that accumulated large numbers of soldiers that became known as the Killers, or Al-Qatala. 
With this power, Suleiman, under his new moniker of The Wolf, directed the AQ network to use terrorist tactics with the collective goal of causing major world powers to collapse into an untenable war, subsequently destroying the global economy. AQ tactics are unconventional and do not distinguish between civilian and military targets. AQ soldiers are ruthless and do not offer or accept surrender with those who do. Being mercilessly slaughtered or brutally executed, they have also been shown to use guerrilla warfare to a large extent, as well such as the use of IED booby traps, the ambush of enemy patrols and perhaps most notably, an underground tunnel network. The following years would see a back and forth movement of operations in the war on terror. These years would also see the creation of the coalition and allegiance. The coalition is a multinational alliance that consists of Western forces from the United Kingdom, United States, Australia, Canada and several European countries. The allegiance is an alliance of the remnants of Russian and Middle Eastern forces, foreign mercenaries, rogue NATO soldiers and the Urzikstan Special Service Group. Although there wasn't an outright war, these alliances were clearly on opposite sides, leading to a lot of tension between the world's superpowers. The first incident occurred on October 4th, 2019. The Allegiant Special Infantry Kalsang Kurgan infiltrates, secures and captures a known AQ stronghold and the Azir cave complex near the Alsayev village in Urzikstan. Operation Empty House, as it was called, quickly took a turn for the worse as Kurgan 1 encountered a crashed coalition UAV. A coalition quick reaction force or QRF calls on Lighthouse 2 is dispatched to clear the village of AQ fighters, secure the crash site and recover the UAV black box. As both after action reports claim the opposite side was the first to fire shots, it's unclear how the incident went down exactly, but it resulted in casualties on both sides. It was one of the first events that would lead to the eventual breaking of the armistice and in the short term that will create a lot of tension between the West and Russia. Only 20 days later, on the 24th of October, the CIA launched an operation in Tradansk, Kostovia, where Alex, a CIA operations officer and a small team of marine raiders were sent in to locate the latest shipment of Barkov's chlorine gas at a depot before it would be shipped to Urzikstan. After infiltrating the depot and locating the gas, Alex and the marine raiders commandeered and escorted the gas out, but were ambushed by AQ forces. With Spetsnaz, soldiers dead and the gas stolen by AQ, this operation was close to turning into an international incident. In the years before, AQ wasn't just a rebellious group of resistance fighters opposing Barkov's rule in Urzikstan like the ULF. AQ made not only the Russian forces their enemy, but also the Western forces and the ULF. On October 25th, not even 24 hours after the failed CIA operation in Verdansk, Kyle Gas Garrick was working with CTSFO tracking down an AQ terrorist cell in London. Coming across a suspicious white van, Garrick and the CTSFO made an attempt to stop the AQ cell from launching their assault, but were too late. The van drove into a crowded Piccadilly Circus, detonating and resulting in dozens of civilian deaths. Garrick, the CTSFO and local police forces then cleaned up the remaining AQ forces, but it was still a disaster. Roughly 48 hours after the CIA's field operation, Price arranged a meeting between Alex and Farah in Rizabi. In an attempt to trace the stolen gas, Alex requests Farah's help. However, before she was willing to help him, Alex needed to help her first. Under command of Farah, Alex disguised himself as a local to remain undetected in Ramaza and planted explosives on helicopters from Russian commanders that were in town that day. This was a distraction to pull security away from the Russian airbase in Al Rab. With the Russian troops distracted, Alex and the UOF launched their assault on the airbase, managing to secure two armories, but the team was surrounded by the returning soldiers. Outnumbered and outgunned, an unmarked Apache provided by Laswell managed to clear the enemy armor, allowing the ULF militia to take the base and limit Barkov's airspace. A day after, the SAS anti-terror wing, including Price and Garrick, breached and cleared a residence in Camden Town. Garrick's intel suggested the members who organized the Piccadilly terrorist attacks did so from this location. Floor by floor, the SAS managed to clear out the hostels and recover valuable intel on the location of the wolf. 
The unrest caused by Barkov's regime allowed AQ to occupy the former presidential palace of Urzikstan, the Anaya Palace. On the 28th of October, the coalition and allegiance launched Operation Doorkick and Sanctum respectively in order to infiltrate, clear and secure the palace for their control. Allegiance Operation 4 call sign Blacksmith 4 fast roped into the palace grounds as they were engaged by AQ. After eliminating 12 out of 18 identified AQ targets, the additional forces retreat. At the same time, a coalition strike force, call sign Reaver 2, Warrior 1, infiltrate the palace from the opposite side, eliminating multiple AQ patrols along the way. After executing room-to-room -room sweeps, engaging unknown targets outside the palace and sustaining heavy casualties, the coalition is forced to retreat, leaving the palace in allegiance control. Counting the conflicts in the Azir Caves and Chlorine Gas Depot in Ferdansk, this is the third encounter gone bad between the Coalition and Allegiance, disrupting the already fragile truce. At the same time, with the intel retrieved from the townhouse in Camden Town, Alex and the Demon Dogs under command of Lieutenant Marcus Griggs were tasked with capturing and extracting the wolf from the Ramaza Hospital. After fighting through the city and the hospital, Alex and Demon Dogs managed to successfully take the wolf into custody. Alex, Farah and Hadir would extract him to the US Embassy, the primary landing zone for extractions. However, as night fell, AQ insurgents under leadership of Jamal the Butcher Rahar, the wolf's number two, gathered around the embassy while Alex, Farah and Hadir were waiting for extraction. Price and Garrick, in an attempt to provide extraction on the roof of the embassy, were shot down and barely managed to make it out alive. Roughed up but alive, the duo made their way through the embassy and reunited with the soldiers in the safe room in the basement. Escaping through the back door to the ambassador's compound, the team took up defensive positions, eliminating substantial AQ numbers. However, eventually AQ managed to overwhelm and breach the compound and in turn secure the wolf. The following day, the team split up. Price and Garrick would go door to door searching for AQ terrorist cells that could be hiding the wolf. Alex, Farah and Hadir would ambush the wolf if he would try to escape via the only way out of town, the Highway of Death, located near Deras Urzikstan. After repelling several AQ convoys, the trio and ULF were under attack by Russian troops until Hadir revealed his plan and launched a car bomb with Barkov's chlorine gas eliminating the Russian troops and knocking out Alex and Farah. When woken up by Price and Garrick, Hadir was long gone. Intel suggested Hadir was recovered by AQ in the foothills and extracted to the wolf's compound in Takari Urzikstan. Launching a joint SES cia operation, the group sweeps and clears the compound with no sign of the wolf or Hadir. One of the remaining residents informs them that the wolf is hiding underground beneath the tea house. Taking point into the tunnel, Alex and Farah are cut off from the rest as an explosion triggers and as the pair slowly make their way to the other end, they find the wolf with an active bomb vest strapped to him. Shooting him, Alex and Farah manage to eliminate the wolf and disarm the bomb vest, but Hadir managed to escape custody. Not even two days later, Price and Garrick meet up with an old friend, Nikolai, the leader of the private military contractor Chimera. This BMC seems to hire former military operators internationally, including dirty soldiers and former gangsters. Nikolai, Price and Garrick join forces to catch the butcher in St. Petersburg and interrogate him on the location of Hadir. After pursuing him through the streets of St. Petersburg, the trio manage to capture him and extract him to their safe house. Here, Yegor Novak, a mercenary and professional fixer that turned to Chimera after refusing to deal with Zakayev arms, takes on the interrogation of the Butcher. After a brutal interrogation, including threatening the Butcher's wife and son, Bryce and Garrick managed to locate the chlorine gas to Karetka Theater and track down Hadir's location too. The day after escaping the wolf's den, Hadir plans to eliminate Barkov once and for all. Using the wolf's AQ fighters, they swarm Barkov's residence in Barsi, Moldova. Price and Garrick sneak through the buildings, rescuing and questioning hostages taken by AQ to locate Hadir. Tracking down Hadir to Barkov's office, Price and Garrick managed to detain him, but were forced to escape the compound as Barkov's forces started attacking them. 
Managing to escape into a tunnel, Hadir was about to be extracted by the SES until Laswell showed up, demanding to take Hadir and turning him into a Russian custody to avoid a proxy war between Russia and the West. With the intel gathered from Barkov's residence, Price and Garrick with the support of Alex, Farah and the ULF, and an unmarked US APC and UAV drone planned to launch an operation to destroy Barkov's chemical production factory. Although hesitant at first, as Farah doesn't want to cross borders, Price convinces her that there are no ties to the West and Russians will blame the attack on the terrorists. With the plan set, the force attacks the factory and is opposed with heavy resistance from Barkov's army. Step by step, they manage to take out the soldiers and plant the explosives on the furnace and pipelines. However, as Alex and Farah's detonators malfunctioning, one of them would have to sacrifice themselves in order to complete the operation. Finally, believing in what he was fighting for, Alex sacrifices himself, or so it seemed. In the meantime, Farah snuck aboard Barkov's helicopter, which was flying above the factory. As Barkov, in his frustration, was requesting a communication line to Moscow, Farah steps him until he's unable to get up. Showing no remorse for his atrocities, he tells her that what he did was to prevent terrorists from harming Russia. His not so famous last words. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos are very time consuming from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. If you like these types of videos and want to support me in continuing to create, there are several things you can do. First of all, liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video. Other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos on a regular basis. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. And the last way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. In return you will unlock exclusive rewards such as digital lore items and exclusive posts or perhaps unique ideas you can implement. The more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube and in turn this will result in more frequent and higher quality content. Whatever you decide to do, I'll be here because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.